Hi, my name's Stuart Lynch, and this is the fourth and final of the SwiftUI gesture videos where I go over gestures in SwiftUI. If you've not watched the three videos where we covered all of the gestures, I recommend that you do so as I build on concepts that we learned there. A starter project, including the completed parts for the first three sets in this series, can be downloaded from the link in the description below. There are three composite gestures. In previous videos, we covered simultaneous gestures, and we'll complete the set in this video by covering the two more composite gestures, sequence gestures, and exclusive gestures. If this is something you want to learn, then keep watching. We have already encountered composite gestures, as I said, in previous videos. In both of those cases, we looked at the simultaneous composite gesture. When we covered the tap gesture, we looked at combining a tap gesture with a count of two simultaneously with a tap gesture of a count of three. If I tap twice, the ball scaled. If I tapped three times, it was scaled and changed color. The two tap was completed and simultaneously the three tap color change also ran. In our rotation gesture example, we simultaneously ran a magnification and a rotation gesture so we could scale and rotate our square at the same time. What we want to look at in this video is how we can complete one gesture before the next one takes place. That is, one gesture action is performed before the next one. As with the previous videos, I'm going to use a filled circle. And if you've been following along with the previous videos, this file is not in those first examples. It's simple enough to create though on your own. It is, however, in the starter set for the project listed in the link in the description below. Starting with sequence gestures, we want to sequence a long press gesture with a minimum duration of half a second to be followed by a drag gesture meaning you can't drag the circle until after tapping and holding for half a second. When the long press is completed, we want to scale the circle by a factor of 1.5. Now we've done both long press gesture and drag gesture in the previous videos, so I'm going to go through this fairly quickly. I highly recommend that if you haven't already watched the previous videos in this series that you do so. Let's start by creating a long press gesture and we'll specify a minimum duration of one half a second. This gives an error in our code because our body doesn't have a return value. And we can silence that error by simply adding a return before our circle view. When the half second is completed, we want to scale the circle. So this means we need a state variable that we will call so that we can apply that to our circle view. Initially, it's going to be false. We can add a scale effect to our circle using the ternary operator. So if scaled, it will be 1.5, else 1, or no scale. We can set the isScaled value to true once our long press gesture has finished. So we can use the onEnded function for that gesture. In the body, we just set isScaled to true and if you're watching this video after the release of iOS 14 and Xcode 12, you won't need to add the self. But as a creation of this project here, I'm still using Xcode 11, so I need it. For the second gesture, we want to create a drag gesture. A drag gesture will cause the offset position of the circle to change. This means that we need two state variables, one for the finished position once we have finished dragging, and another for the current drag offset. Both of these will be of type CG size, and both will start at CG size.0. As these values change, we can adjust the offset of the circle by adding on the drag offset to our position using the width and height attributes. In our drag gesture, we'll use two of the functions, one to get the translation and the drag changes, 
and the other to fix the final position once the drag has ended. First, the onChange function. We want to assign the values translation to the drag offset, and while doing that, ensure that isScaled is also true while we are dragging. Once the drag is ended, we need to increment our last position so that our circle does not revert back to zero, or the last position of the start of the drag. We do this by adding both the width and height of the values translation property to the corresponding positions width and height. Then we want to reset our drag offset to zero, and finally set isScaled to false. Now that we have our gestures and their functions created, we can combine them using a sequence where the long press gesture is sequenced before the drag gesture. And finally, we can apply that new sequence gesture to the circle. If we run this now, we see that it works fine. Well, kind of. It's not very smooth. I want to add some animation to the scaling. With SwiftUI, that's pretty easy. We can add an implicit animation to our circle. So let's add an ease in out with a duration of half a second. Running again, we see that the nice scaling effect happens after our long press is completed, but there are three issues with this solution. The scaling happens after the long press, and I want it to, to happen during the long press. And the pointer gets ahead of the drag, and this is because the implicit animation is being applied to both the scale effect and the drag offset. And finally, if we don't drag at all, the circle never scales back down. We need to somehow only allow that animation to take place during the long press, and then release while dragging, and then engage again after dragging, and this method of dealing with the sequence gesture just won't work. We need to apply our functions to the sequence gesture, and not just to each individual gesture. And that's what we'll do next. To improve our code, let's modify the existing code. I would, however, like to keep this version, so in the navigator, I'm going to option drag the file to duplicate it and change the name to Sequence Gesture Example 2. In the code itself, I'll add the number 2 to the struct and preview names, and also make sure we change the preview view as well. Now the first thing I have to do is remove our long press and drag gesture functions. And along with that, I'll remove the isScaled and drag offset variables. We're going to have to replace them with something else. This of course causes errors in these lines of code. So let's just comment them out for the time being, and I'll come back to them later. What we're going to do is apply our gesture functions to the composite gesture. And when you sequence two gestures, the callbacks capture the state of both gestures at the same time. I want to start by using the updating function on our sequence gesture. We see that we need a gesture state variable that we will get to shortly. But also note that we get values for both the long press and the drag gesture throughout the updating process, as both functions have an updating function. For our gesture state, we can create an enum that will represent the different states that we may find ourselves in. So before we complete our updating function, let's create one. At the top, but within our struct, create an enum called press drag state. And we'll have three different cases. We will either be inactive, pressing, or dragging. And if we are dragging, we'd like to know the translation. So for our dragging case, we can have an associated value that will be a CG size representing that translation. Now with that in place, we'll create a gesture state variable. 
and we'll finish our updating function. We'll call our variable press drag state and we'll initialize it at the inactive state of our new enum. To complete our updating function, we can use our new gesture state variable and use value, state, and unused transaction for the other placeholders like we did in our previous videos. The value, as I mentioned, however, is different. It represents an enum that contains the state of each of the different gestures in order. So if we do a switch on the value, we can let Xcode fill in the different cases like this. In the first case, this is the value from our long press gesture, and it's a Boolean. If we're pressing, it will be true. So we want to set our gesture state variable to the enum value of dot pressing. For the second case, we have both the value of the first gesture and the second. In the first case, long press was true, and if we're dragging, the value will be that drag value for which we want to take the translation. So we can pass that on to the associated value of our enum with let drag and assign that to our gesture state variable, passing on that value. However, it's optional, so we need to return dot zero if there's an issue. For any other reason, we can use the default case and set our state to inactive. Similarly, for our onEnded function, we'll get the value for both gestures. If we use the same switch statement, we realize that the only one that we are concerned with is when the first gesture's value is still true, and we can take the translation of the second value and add it to the current circle's position, making sure that we handle the optional case just by adding zero to the width and height. We don't need to check any other case. We can just break out of our switch as the default. With this now all in place, all we have to do is fix our two commented out statements. We need a Boolean to know when to scale our circle. And this will be when we are not dragging. This is easy enough to do with a computed property in our enum. So back in the enum, we'll add that computed property for is active, and we'll return false if inactive. Otherwise, we'll return true. And now we can fix our scale effect. We'll check press drag state dot is active. If so, 1.5, otherwise 1. For our offset, we need to add on our drag state translation instead of the drag offset. And this is a CG size. So let's add one more computed property to our enum that will return the translation when we're dragging. Otherwise, it'll just return CG size dot zero. Now we can update our circles offset using that. The last thing we need to do is fix our animation so that it only animates when we are not dragging. So one more computed variable to our enum that will return true when that is the case. And with that, we can update our animation so that it only animates if not dragging. Otherwise, the animation will be nil. Let's test this in our preview. We get a nice smooth animation that is handled when we tap and hold. And then when we move our circle, the animation is no longer applied but when we stop, the circle animates back down again. Perfect. The final combined gesture we're going to look at is the exclusive gesture combination. An exclusive gesture consists of two gestures where only one of them can succeed. 
Now, to be honest, I can't really think of a good use case for this, but for completion's sake, let's take a look at this. And for that, I'm going to duplicate that first sequent gesture example again and modify it a little. So, like before, we'll just option drag on that file in the navigator to duplicate it. And this time I'll rename it exclusive gesture example. And in the file, I'll rename the struct and the preview struct, as well as the previews view. It'll also be a little clearer to see what's happening if we change it from a scaling to a change of color. So instead of the is scaled variable, I'm going to refactor it and call it color is green. Now for our long press gesture, I'm going to add the on change function and set color is green to true. Back in on ended, I'm going to change the value of color is green to false. In the on change function for the drag gesture, I'm going to change the assigned value here to false as well. And I'm going to remove the scale effect for our circle. Now we can apply that color change to the fill. So we'll modify the fill so that if color is green, we get a color of green, otherwise red. Now instead of sequence before, we're going to change our long press before drag gesture to exclusively. Let's run that in the preview now. If I long press, the color turns green, then after one half second, turns back to red. But I can't drag after that. We're exclusively getting the long press gesture. If I tap and drag quickly before the long tap time limit has completed, the color quickly turns back to red, and you can drag. You are exclusively using the drag gesture. Well, that's it for gestures in Swift UI. I hope that through this series of videos you have a better understanding and will be able to implement them in your own code. I have lots of other videos available and in the queue as well, so please check out the rest of my channel. You can also visit my website to see the apps that I have available on the App Store and visit my GitHub page to see what I have available as public repositories. If you like what you've seen, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And ring the bell to get notified when I post new videos. I'm most active on Twitter, so please follow me there as well to find out what else I'm up to. Thanks for watching.